Okay, so to continue, what are the different pointer operations? Okay, or what are the operations that you can apply on pointers? So it only has four operations. So first, you can add an integer to a pointer, or you can subtract an integer from a pointer. We can subtract two pointers, or we can compare pointers using relational operators. Okay, so let's have some examples on how these operations work. So in this first example, we have here an array alpha of type car whose value list contains the characters A, B, C, D, and E. Then we have two pointer variables of type pointer to char and one ordinary variable of type char. So in this line here, so alpha is assigned to P1. But the question is, what is the value of alpha here? So since alpha is an array name, and by an array name, it means that it will contain the base address of your array. So and by base address, we mean the address of the first element of your array, which in this example, it would be the address of A. So whatever the address of A is, it's going to be the value of alpha, and that will be assigned to P1. So P1 now will be pointing to the first element of your array alpha, which is A. Okay, so this is an example of adding an integer to a pointer. So we have P1 plus 2. But take note that what we are adding here is not really the actual integer. No? So for example, if the address of A is at address 200, and if we add 2, it becomes 202. It's not like that. But what we are actually adding is the number of offsets from the original position of P1. So if P1 is pointing to the first cell, so if we add 2, it means that we are just going to move two positions from the original position of P1 and then get the address of the new position and assign that to P2. Okay, so here the end result would be P2 will be pointing to the third cell which contains the element C. Okay, then in this line here we use a dereferencing operator to get the value pointed by P2 which is C and store that in our variable X. So then we use an output statement to get or to display the values pointed by P1, the value pointed by P2, and the value stored in X. So when you execute this printf statement, it will display A, C, and C. So again, to clarify that one, let me demonstrate it. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So your array alpha contains five characters, A, B, C, D, and E. Then, assuming that these are the memory addresses of these characters, so let's say that the base address is at address 200, and since character allocates only one byte of memory, so the next available address would be 201, then the next one is 202, and so on. Okay, so this is the effect of executing this statement. So since the value of alpha is the base address, which is 200, okay, that 200 now will be stored in P1. So P1 will now be pointing to the first element, which is A. Okay, and this is also the result of adding two offsets from P1. So if P1 points to the first cell, we just simply count two offsets. So 1, 2, and get the address of this location and store that to P2. So P2 will now have the value or the address 202. So it's now pointing to C. Okay, 
then it is the effect of executing the statement. So using the dereferencing operator, so we get the value pointed by P2, which is C, and assign that to X. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, how about the second example? So here we also have an array of type float, which has four values, 21.4, 33.0, 5.1, and 8.8. .8. And we have two pointer variables which are pointer to float, PF1 and PF2. So this is one this is an assignment statement, which means that the base address of the array share okay, will be assigned to both PF1 and PF2. So in effect PF1 and PF2 will be both pointing to the same location, which in this example is the first element of your array share. So to demonstrate adding an integer to a pointer, we can just simply use an increment operator such as this. Okay, So we can increment PF1 by one offset and then do it again and display the new values of the new values pointed by PF1 and PF2. So it will look like this. Okay. So share, which has four values, and assuming that the base address starts at 300. Okay. So let's assume that our system uses four bytes of memory for a float data type. Okay. So it's actually. Uh, machine dependent so let's just make an example or make an assumption that type float here allocates 4 bytes of memory so if the base address is at address 300 then the next address would be increments of 4 so 304, 308 and 312 respectively okay so when this line of statement is executed, so this is the result. Both PF1 and PF2 will contain the same address, which is 300. And they will be both pointing to the first element, which is 21.4. And if we increment PF1 using the increment operator, which means that we're just simply adding one offset to the original position of PF1, so this is the result. So PF1 now will be pointing to the new location, which is the one that has address 304. And that address 304 will now be stored in PF1. Okay, then we increment PF1 again. So this time PF1 will be pointing to the next cell, which is located at memory address 308. And again, this 308 will be stored in PF1. So PF1 now will be pointing to the third cell, but PF2 will still be pointing to the first cell. So when you output the values pointed by PF1 and PF2, PF1 will display 5.1, of course using the dereferencing operator, and PF2 will display the value 21.4.